Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Corporate Escapist TV show. I'm your host, Christine Innes, and I'm really excited to have you here today. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your day or evening um, to come and join us. And I have the very beautiful Carmel joining me today. So thank you, lovely, thank for coming you. on. And, you know, I know we're going to have an amazing conversation, um, you know, talking about, you know, just, you know, leaving corporate, but also, you know, some of the pitfalls it is, you know, personally, but also, you know, going into business as well. So I'm going to hand over to Carmel to do an introduction about herself, and then we can get this amazing conversation started. So thank you, Carmel, for joining us. Beautiful. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm very excited. So a little intro about me. My name is Carmel Murphy and as you can hear by my voice, I'm Irish by um, birth, uh, but I live in Australia now. So um, my brief introduction in terms of um, being in corporate. So my corporate positions, I've been in management and leadership for many, many years. I was a uh, uh, state manager of a recruitment company. I was a business coach, regional manager for a restaurant company. Very well paid jobs, very high pressure jobs. Um, however, uh, there was always something missing. So I was always on the rush and the, the adrenaline of getting stuff done, but I was getting stuff done for somebody else in the end. So I, in the last few years, which we'll go through, I'm sure, later, um, I've decided that no more, I'm not working for the man. I've had enough. <laughs> um, but it, has, it hasn't always been an easy thing to jump off that. So I've been in leadership and management for, goodness me, um, th over 35 years. So a big step to step out of that. Yeah. Cool. And I think that, um, you know, what you said is that you constantly are like on the go and it is like that when you're working for somebody else because it is their goals, their dreams, their destination that you want to get to. And you feel like you have to keep constantly running, running, running. And then when you actually sort of stop, take that breath, I guess, and just sort of go, why am I doing this? Like, why am I <laughs> running myself down for somebody else's dreams and not following my yeah. own? Yeah, and, and oftentimes, and especially I have three children, and I was a single mom for a lot of that time too, um, trying to, in the hospitality industry, was a, a lot of my work. So, you know, coming home at two in the morning after finishing a shift and having to be up at six in the morning to get my son to a cricket game that was the other side of the city, Mm -hmm. And um, quite often I'd be going, I'd be there in a minute, and I'd be flaked out in the car, and because I was just so exhausted, and and it's just running on that adrenaline, mm -hmm. and as you say, then finding, well, what am I doing it for somebody else for? Mm -hmm. So yeah, but there, there there comes with that a little bit of fear of yes. if I step out on my own, will I make it? And um, if I, you know, as a single mom, if I lose the roof over my children's head. Um, you know, I, I couldn't take that chance for a lot of years, so it held me in fear. Yeah, and fear consumes us so much because it's the fear of the unknown, it's the fear of what our people are going to think, but also, too, we mm. are we are comfortable creatures. Like, as human beings, we like being comfortable, and when we have to learn to be totally uncomfortable and, you know, it, I, I take it back, like, when you're learning to drive a car, you know, like, you or oh, you're really nervous and you're sort of, you know, super conscious of everything that's around you. And then all of a sudden, you know, you start getting more comfortable and you go, oh, this is easy. Yeah. And you become complacent. And that's what can happen. I think when you're working for somebody else, you can become so complacent. And it's just I, I, sleepwalking through life is how I also describe it. Yeah. And it's um, like there's levels of uh, consciousness and competency mm -hmm. and it becomes an unconscious competence as in we don't even know that we're doing it anymore. Yeah. Like I, I always say to people, if you get up and brush your teeth, if you think about it for a minute, which side do you brush, start brushing your teeth with? Mm -hmm. Try it on the other side for once. Mm -hmm. And it is that uncomfortable feeling of, oh, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. And we just create shortcuts because the brain creates shortcuts so that we're not overwhelmed by all the information all the time. And we do. We just ha create habits that become so automatic. And I, I relate so much to driving the car because I drive a manual. And now sometimes I remember um, kind of going, oh, my God, how did I get here? It becomes <laughs> so unconscious. You're going, I don't even remember the trip that I got here. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
because it, it is it is quite easy when you're sort of you know in the normal sort of like daily sort of nine to five type routine and you know we create these routines ourselves but then obviously yeah. when you step in and you know decide that you're actually going to take that leap of faith and I mean you don't want to take us back to that moment that you know for you where you decided that no I've drawn that line in the sand and gone okay I need to make a difference because it's yeah. for me it was just it it was for like forced because I, I got quite sick but I know that the you know there is like that line in the sand moment that we all have and just go yeah okay I need a change yeah yeah absolutely and and look I remember it so well because I was in um the recruitment position so we had at that time Perth was in a really high you know, there was work everywhere, and you could get any amount of money, and especially in the mining industry. So it was a recruitment agency for hospitality type people. So at that time, we had 450 temp staff, wow. and obviously we had the permanent um, staff going as well. So we would provide staff to the likes of the WACA, which is the Western Australia Cricket Arena. We would provide the staff for the footy grounds. You name it, we will provide the staff. So we could have 100 staff going to one venue at one time. Mm -hmm. So a service we provided was we had an after-hours phone as well. So we had a 24-hour phone because the casino area was 24-7. So they could ring us at 5 in the morning and say, I need a bartender. Mm -hmm. um, so we would rotate this phone. So as state manager, I had the after-hours phone. We'd have a list of people on standby. I have my state manager phone. And obviously I had my personal phone. <clears throat> so I had worked previously in the casino area. And I remember this night in particular, people just kept ringing, I need a chef, I need a bartender, I need a this, I need a that. And I'm on the phone and the next thing, the state manager phone is ringing as well because they couldn't get through on this phone. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm running out of people on standby at this stage. And I remember having the two phones going and my personal phone rang as well because the guys in the casino had my personal phone number <laughs> and I just remember standing there and I actually burst into tears once I hung up the phone of course and I went I can't keep doing this mm. I just can't because I, I was a nervous wreck is probably the best way to do it mm. and um, I went searching for something then it's like what else and, and when we open up to opportunities we can actually begin to see them and the things were always there but I never saw them so I actually discovered coaching was what I decided to do and I went and started studying that but it took me a while from there to actually leave leave permanently I left that job shortly after that but I, I, I tried to work on my own but I wasn't ready for that I hadn't, I didn't know the steps. I didn't know the foundation that I needed to put down to be ready. And mm -hmm. then did the whole failure. I went back to work again and, and began that seesaw for a few years. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really important that we really highlight to people to say that like we will have that moment in the sand, but sometimes that that moment is there, but we are just not ready to be able to take that leap or we don't have the tools. Yeah. We don't have the knowledge and there's nothing wrong with that because when you step into the unknown there is this sort of pull below us that we sort of go we don't know what we're jumping into we don't know what's at the bottom we don't know you know is there something that's going to come about like you know there's so many different things mm. um but it's all a learning curve for us and if we can learn from those experiences so that the next time that we actually do decide to take that that leap of faith was so much better equipped for it and yeah <clears throat> and it's it's more than that it's actually um the people around you will mm. quite often and, and my dad was an instance of this so my dad had worked in a job for 35 40 years whatever and took voluntary retirement yeah yeah normal mm. and he was petrified for me to do and even the fact of in hospitality is quite a transient industry so mm -hmm. sometimes i'd change jobs after 18 months they'd always be you know a higher job and he was always saying to me oh my god you can't change jobs what's wrong mm -hmm. with you you have to stay in the same job mm -hmm. so you'll get people around you and and understanding that it's not they don't want the best for you but they're scared because they don't know something else mm -hmm. But everything starts with a thought. So yeah. once you've decided in your head there's something different, 
then you'll start looking for it. And just if I was to give my past self a hint, it'd be just go at the speed of grace, as in mm -hmm. don't put yourself into debt or don't put yourself into financial hardship to do it, but just keep moving, yeah. knowing that you're going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's not the the size of the steps. It's actually just knowing that you're getting to that end destination. And everybody's journey is so different. And I don't think that it's um, it's fair for people to constantly, and we all do it, you know, we always sort of compare ourselves to others or, you know, going, well, they got here this quickly, they got here that quickly. But in a world full of social media where there's filters, there's, you know, you only see the best, you don't get to see the raw yeah. stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And people need to remember that they're just these people who maybe, you know, they're successful. There's probably a lot of shit that's happened, you know, along the way, like, you know, to really oh, get into look, it. Absolutely. And I call a fake book. And I say that with respect as in, yes, it's great in the social media and the interaction in it, but it is only the best side. And I had this um, conversation when I, I was running an event the other night and we were talking about vulnerability. And sometimes people think vulnerability has gone up and say, oh, I don't feel well. Well, that's not it. It's actually speaking your truth, but in a way that it allows other people and, and strong women, and that's where I come from a space of, because it's oh, you're a strong woman, you can handle everything. Well, no. Underneath, there were times that I was vulnerable too, and it's been able to say, you know what? I'm feeling a bit wobbly today. I know I'll be fine, but I need some help and support today. And it's the ability of being able to say that without fear of somebody going, oh, she's losing her marbles. Mm. Um, and, and it gives other people permission to, to move it. I love Brené Brown. I'm sure a lot of people will have heard of Brené Brown and the things she talks about in the arena. And that's how I see myself a lot of the time. Like I'm bruised and broken. I have the marks here, but I'm ready to go. And I stuff it up still to this day. Mm. But not taking action to me has more pain attached to it than the discomfort of moving and taking steps and staying where I am. And some of that comes from some family situations and deaths in the family that have made me wake up and go, what? Mm. This this isn't what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. I totally resonate. Um, I think when we first started talking and you were sharing your story, like it, so much of it hit home because the fact is, is that, you know, yeah. so much it happened in my life that I've just like compounded it. But I could have stayed there and I could have sat there and you play the victim mm. for me. Why me? Why that? Whereas I've turned that and been able to learn from that experience. And it's made me the, you know, a stronger, more resilient type of person. But yeah. there are yeah. days where I sit there and I'm like going, I need a breather or I need someone yeah. to and what am I doing? Yeah, like going, come on, like seriously. Like, yeah. you know, um, that mean girl voice goes off in my head and tells me all the stuff that, you know. Um, and it, it's about having coping mechanisms. And I love how you said, you know, yeah. the community and people around you that are there to really support you and to up-level you. Because I think that if I didn't expand my network out to people, um, yeah. I would be where I am today and constantly taking more steps forwards and more leaps yeah. of faith than, you know, yeah. depending on myself more. Um, mm. Because you do, you can get yeah. stuck. It, you do get stuck. And, and look, um, just to briefly share a tiny bit of it, that one of my biggest things was um, in 2016, my beautiful sister was diagnosed with terminal illness. And um, 15 months later, passed away. Now, that was, as you can understand, a quite an emotional journey. Um, but when she passed, the, the most amazing thing happened. And I say this to people sometimes, and they kind of go, what? I said, one of the best things that happened to me was my sister passing, as well as the worst. Because it opened up a part of me. It broke me open, I'll be honest, because my poor dad died six weeks later. But it it broke my vulnerability, my, my hard shell, if you like, open in such a way that I've had deeper, more vulnerable, more open relationships with women since that, that I never had before. 
Mm. I have a, a different thing. And, and it is what has propelled me and made me, because she was 58 years old when she passed away. And I just, it brought my own, um, start to thinking with myself, well, my own mortality into question. She had done everything. She had worked for years. She had made sure she had all her insurances ready, ready for retirement. And I went, what are we doing? What? There's no big trophy at the end of all this. What am I doing? So I, I retired from being people pleasing and thought, you know what? With all due respect, I, I trust and I respect your journey, but I don't care what you think about me anymore mm -hmm. because I need to take steps or I will die inside and I'm not going to die with the song still in me. So mm -hmm. that's going to be, be my biggest pusher to actually move forward. And, and I'm so grateful to my sister for that because somewhere in me thinks, well, she needed to do that to give me a kick in the butt. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but it was really a defining moment of we get into this hustle and this bustle and, and everything and, and we lose sight of life has to be on the way, not in the way. What are we doing trying to be this person we perceive somebody else wants us to be? And I say, stop that. No, I, I am me. I'm authentic. I, I go out and try and help other people. But I also know that I have a lot to give and help other people myself. Does that make sense? Uh, it's, it, look, it makes perfect sense to me because, you know, yeah. um, I mean, our stories are uh, as similar, but obviously the, 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 the circumstances are different. But I think when we, we use their pain to be able to serve us and to really appreciate just the tiny little things that we have in life yeah. and to really be present in the moment and not constantly thinking. And I am such a planner. Like I love, you know, I have diaries everywhere, you know, and, you know, try and plan <laughs> as much as I possibly yeah. can. But there is times where I need to just take stock and I just need to be present in that moment, mm. present in conversations that you're having, presence when you're experiencing something new and yeah. actually allowing yourself to feel it because otherwise... You need to plan that. <laughs> you need to plan that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But yeah. Yeah. I've, I've become... I've got the ability now where I know when I'm over planning things and I know that, right. you know, I need to, you know, when I'm with my family, I know that phones away, you know, and I'm present with them and actually enjoying the, the stupid conversations, you know, and it's, it's, you know, just the fun and the laughter and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Because that is what real life is all about. It's not about. Absolutely planning for you know retirement it's about having these beautiful connections and moments in life and that's why yeah. I really love and I am so grateful that we get to you know bring your story out so that people can actually start appreciating those moments more opposed to planning every little minute detail um, with it yeah absolutely thank you and, and you gotta have fun one of my middle names would be fun i i see the most ridiculous things and maybe it's just my head <laughs> but i could make them fun and, and i am fortunate i have grandchildren now um as well and oh goodness to actually take the time to observe children in their innocence and the things that they come out with with no filters, it just opens up, oh, my God, why are we have all this bullshit around us and beliefs? And I get that they come from the circumstances we've been in. But take time to watch some small children. It can actually be quite insightful. Oh, absolutely. I picked my niece up from the school bus the other day and we're walking down and she goes, is there any treats? And I'm like going, oh, I don't know. And she goes, well, you've got Nutella. And I said to her, I said, yeah, I do. And she's like, just having, you know, I mean, it sounds so minute, but you're having this fun conversation and we're joking about it. And she goes, what if I just have one teaspoon? Like, it's just those sort of <laughs> conversations. And otherwise you could just go, yeah. yeah, no, you're not having it. But just to enlighten them and then they actually allow to 
for you to bring that child out of you and to have yeah. that, to, you know, loosen up a little bit and to, you know. Yeah, oh, it's so good. And look, I'm really fortunate. My my partner is, um, he could probably plant you in the ground and grow you. Like he's just a natural green thumb. So we grow a lot of our own veggies and mm -hmm. we have chickens and ducks and things like that. So when I have my grandson over, he's out exploring and the places he thinks of going just to look for eggs I wouldn't even think of going there yeah. and it's just like it's pure joy that's the best way to, it's pure joy to let down your guards put down your to-do list and just be yeah yeah and we don't allow ourselves to do that enough no and I really loved it how you thought that it's coming back to you and allowing you to shine and it's letting go of other people's expectations. And I think a lot of the time in life that our fear is our own judgment within ourselves and judgment of what other people are going to think, judgment of what how people are yeah. going to react to what we're doing. And I mean, we, you and I are both in a very important role, you know, as both being coaches and to really, you know, be vulnerable raw and open and share our stories but when we can actually show people that you know what it's okay to be you 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 don't need yeah. to be anybody else because who wants to try and pretend to be somebody else when you actually get to live your life and you get to be you and people actually love you and accept you for yourself and that that can actually be quite a hard thing to to take on board and to look in the mirror going, you know what, you're perfectly imperfect. And yeah, okay. I love that. Yeah. 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 And it is exactly okay to be like that because um, I had the highest compliment paid to me last weekend when somebody said they had only ever experienced me online mm -hmm. and, um, and by voice only in a lot of webinars and things like that. They hadn't actually seen my face and they went, oh my God, you're exactly as I imagined you would be and you are the exact same here as you are there. And I was like, oh, that's kind of the highest compliment because, and it's not that we put on falsities, it's because we put on masks to actually protect ourselves mm -hmm. and we have a, an illusion of, if they knew the real me, they wouldn't like me. And that's bullshit because mm. nobody actually knows who the real me is. Mm. We just have all different kind of selves. And this sounds a little bit weird sometimes. It's like the voice is in my head. But our biggest judgment voice in our head is usually ourselves. Yes. We make assumptions that so, and we think that if we go against somebody else's judgment, like if your parents think you have to do X, Y, Z, mm. we have an illusion that we think it's going to be a confrontational conversation. Mm. But it doesn't have to be. We can say it in a calm way. It's like, oh, you know what? I'd love to do that, but I have this to do, and I'm, I'm just going to do this today. We can say mm. it like that instead of, no, I'm not doing what you tell me. There, there's a big difference. Yeah. I, I can so relate because I think, you know, I'd always worked in corporate, and I'd had this um, idea that you – you go to work, you build your career, you have the house, you have the family, like, you know, all that sort of stuff. So yeah. when it all came crashing down and then I made the decision that I was not going to go back into corporate and there was reasons behind it. I didn't want it to affect my health again. But in saying yeah. that, I actually had to find who I was without my job title and yeah. it was the biggest and one of the hardest things to actually do to actually – express who I was without actually saying my job title and yeah. that I actually realized that I was actually um, a multi-layered person opposed to this sort of one dimensional sort of fit in a nice little box you know yeah there's yeah, more exactly. layers to me and it's fun and, and it's exciting and it's yeah you know, I can be the playful, but I can also be the serious person or I can be, you know, the mum, I can be the aunt, like all that sort of stuff. But I can also just sit there and have a good laugh at myself too. Like, you know, yeah. I'm going to take myself that <laughs> too serious. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do that often and you go, well, Carol, that wasn't your best decision. <laughs> so, but that's okay. It's like, well, and I often say to people, I used to get really upset about that. They go, what's different now? I said, I just put it the middle bit and I go, I know I'll eventually get over it. So I just go to the getting over it, getting past yeah. it. 
Yeah, and, and that's just it, their habits. If I was to share anything with anyone to, to help them to get there, it's just understand their habits. And, and we are kept in a way educated to be smaller than we perceive we are because that keeps us in our place almost. That's how society kind of teaches us because everyone can't be doing everything. Everyone can't be the boss of everything. There'll be no workers left. Mm. So just understanding that that's kind of the environment we've been in has programmed us that way. Not in a negative way. That's just how we lived. And if you can go outside it and stretch that elastic band and then stretch it to the size. I, I spoke about this the other day. I said, stretch it that, you know, won't stretch anymore. And the person that I was coaching said, oh, you mean like a bag of knickers? And I went, yeah. <laughs> but that the elastic just can't go back anymore. Yeah. Then you're outside and you're in that place of even bigger growth for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I love it. I, like we're very aligned in, you know, you know, how we want to perceive and like really make a big change and create that ripple effect yeah. sort of, I say around the world because I want, you know, so many people and it's not just women, it's men and women to be able to take stock yeah. and to go, you know what, life is for living, life is for you yeah. to have that spark and joy and to do what you want to do. And yeah. A lot of people, especially when you're a parent as such, because you want to give, give to your children and you take a step back. But one of the things that I've learned is going, well, if I can show my son, I mean, he's already grown up now, but if I show him that giving back to me and following my passion, look how much happier I am, look how much more, you know, alive I feel. And I think that sort of sets yeah often them to go you know what it's not actually being selfish you are actually just owning yourself and realizing that you are just as important as anybody else and we should, absolutely you know I mean you I think you know you can relate you know we do tend to put so many other people first but we have to come back to ourselves and give to us first before we can help anybody else absolutely and and we do have the different masks. So we're mom, we're sister, we're partner, we're, mm -hmm. and there comes a time. And like, well, I don't not help men. I do as well. But I predominantly, my avatar my, is a woman mm -hmm. because I think that we do lose who we are. And we're like, well, okay, if I haven't got the job, if I'm not mom, if I'm not wife, mm -hmm. if I, who the hell am I? And it takes a little bit of deciphering and a little bit of, peeling back of the layers of the onion mm. to actually get down to who that is mm. and we look we search for this massive purpose and 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 that sort of thing and while i'm not saying we don't have purpose if we don't know who we are and what the yearning is well then it makes the roadmap a little bit more difficult to get there yeah absolutely it is and um you know that's probably one of being the the biggest things i know with myself is just finding out who i was because if i didn't know who i was i wouldn't be doing what i am today because i would have just so yeah. easily gone back into the corporate world so easily fallen back into yeah. that sort of job but now you start to sort of go no you know what like i am like when you start saying I am too, that's really powerful for people. So I just want people to know that I am means that you're living in the present um, and owning it. But I know that I am a caring person. I am a kind person. Like all those different sorts of things that define who you are without a label is so important um, to get down to sort of like the root of who you are. And, yeah. um, you know, you want to be that root because you want to be planted in the ground and be strong, yeah. stable, you know, so that you can yeah. stand tall and really own it. Yeah, yeah, and, and that is really important to <clears throat> to actually, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. You, you can find you and, and, and do all that and plant yourself in the ground and you're so right in that way, but you also, <sighs> Gosh, it's, a, it's the most challenging thing to describe. People feel like they failed when they go back to work because mm -hmm. the business didn't work. But the actual harder, I'm going to say that in inverted commas, choice is to actually stay on the path of being in your own business or whatever that is for you. If you don't want to be in your own business, that's cool. But if that is something that you want to do, it's the harder option. 
Mm. People think going back to work is a hard option. No, it's a harder option to stay there or to do the cha-cha, as I like to call it. And sometimes it's two steps back to one step forward. Mm. Go back to work and give yourself a foundation while you're still preparing your dream. Mm. It never ends. People say, oh, but Carmel, I'm getting too old. How old is too old compared to what? What are you measuring Mm. it against? Yeah. Life is going to... 12 months will disappear, two years will disappear if you stay still or not. Yeah, absolutely. And I think sometimes that we tend to think we have to stay on one pathway, but the pathway can actually branch off but still bring you back to that end destination. And that's okay because we can all take these detours. And I mean, if you put in a destination in your GPS, you're generally going to get more than one sort of route to take. Options, yeah. This is, you know, like it's, this is what life is about. It's about setting that destination and then you can make the choices of you might turn left here instead of turning right. Like that's yeah. okay because you're owning it and you're taking that control and saying for the time being, this is where I need to be. And yeah. it doesn't mean you're not going to get to that end destination. It might just take a little bit more time. And, I, and the end destination might even change. Oh, absolutely. You might decide that that's not where you want to go because you didn't know the other option was available. Yeah, true. Yeah. True. Yeah. It's like better yeah. scenery down the road. I'm going to go to that, that <laughs> beat, you know, instead of going here. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, look, look, you know, even just in the last couple of months, like my, my destination has changed. And yeah. And it's actually quite exciting because you go, look at, you know, I thought that I could go to this one place, but I'm actually expanding my horizon and going somewhere else that yep. is going to give me more back. And, you know, it's um, it's scary. It's exciting. You get nervous and, you know, all yeah. those beautiful emotions that come up. Um, so, yeah, I think people just need to remember that it's okay to take little detours. It's okay to change the destination. Yeah, absolutely. And get yourself a mentor um, mm-hmm. of somebody that has at least gone part of the way to where you say you want to go. So they have something proven. So many people talk about, you know, oh, we're in this mastermind group. I'm going, that's great. Who's the mastermind? You know, it, it, you're not. You're in a community group. If somebody in there has not being ahead of where you are or, you know, on the way to where you want to go. So I work with a mentor consistently. He has built four businesses, multi-million dollar businesses from the ground up. So, yeah, I want some of that. Yes. If you're not with somebody like that at some stage, and they don't have to be multimillionaires, as long as they are doing something in the field you want to do and they're ahead of where you want, you are already, well, then go and work with them. Yes. Because it's really vital. Otherwise, people around you will want to keep you safe and tell you to stay where you are. Mm. Yeah. Like, honestly, we, I just had a conversation about that just before, and I think it's so, so true that you need to follow the people that have actually been on the journey beforehand so you can learn yeah. from them. And, you know, most of the time these mentors are very open about the pitfalls and they're very open about things that have actually gone wrong. And that's what you want to learn from because – absolutely then you can sort of buy step some of those and sort of follow the success pathway yeah absolutely (laughs) yeah Um, Yeah. Yeah. but there's no fast track in in life like i think so many people no the like quick 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 you know Quick, quick easy now and that's what everyone will sell you is the quick easy now but there is no quick easy now yeah. But when you have a mentor, what I mean by that is they'll know some of the pitfalls so they can A, warn you and B, help pick you up when you've gone down there. Yeah, exactly. Because quite often we get stuck down there. That's what happens. Yes. Yeah. And it's very easy when you, you want, I always say that um, for myself as being a coach, I can't get in the, I actually get in the trenches with them and actually can show them like and talk them through how to get out because you've been there before. Um, mm-hmm. And that's really what these mentors do because you know, they've been there, they can show you, they can guide you. And even if you do get into that lull, they can just go, you know what, like snap out of it, you'll be right, like follow this and you can get back on track again. So, Mm, yeah, that's beautiful. What would you say, um, so as we sort of, you know, wrap things up and like I I could probably talk to you all day because I absolutely think that we're so (laughs) in alignment, like with everything, you know. Um, 
what would you say like for somebody who, you know, is in corporate and they're not sure, like they may not want to actually go and work for somebody else, but they, they need to have a change. Like, is there something that they can start to do now? Um, you know, just sort of really identify, you know. That- I would get themselves into some kind of environment that has um, access to different people. So, for example, whether it might be a networking group, or there, um, I'm in Perth in WA, so there's a lot of groups for women in business, for example. Mm-hmm. So they don't have to have their own business. So I run events myself, um, and it's for strong women. And um, they come, so some of them are wanting to step out of. Some of them have started stepping out of, and they're mm-hmm. going, I've stepped out, I've taken the jump, but oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so get into some kind of environment like that to test the water and say, hey, is this the kind of thing I want to do? Is yes. this not the kind of thing I want to do? Um, by getting into environments like that, then you can test and measure. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Because um, staying, in, yeah, staying in your own environment, you just won't. No. And just being around that like-minded people as well is actually very, oh, I found that probably one of the most powerful things um, as well because you feed off their energy. And you listen yeah, to absolutely. stories and, yeah, you, you grow and develop just by being surrounded by them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, beautiful. I'm just afraid my phone's gone to run out. Oh, that's okay. We're going to quickly wrap up anyway, and I would love to have you back anyway because I think there's a lot more conversations that we can have to really, you know, allow women to really, you know, rise up with absolutely as well, like to sort of, you know, start stepping into their own power and to really start taking charge back and be present in the moment to do it. So yeah. I just want to say a big thank you so much, like for joining me today and giving up your time. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I will be putting all of your details down the bottom of the video so people can get in contact with you. They can find out about your events, you know, follow you on your know, social media and yeah. all of that. So, but thank you so much for your time today. My I really pleasure. Appreciate it. So, um, thank, thank you for having me. It's been awesome. My my absolute pleasure. Um, I'm so honoured and privileged to be able to have this role. I want to thank everyone who's come and joined us today for this episode of the Corporate Therapist TV show. As I said, I'm your host, Christine Innes, and just to remember to live life to the fullest. So love and light to you all, and we'll be back next week for another episode. Bye.